Okay, I got a, a little code review of a Spring Boot example using ActiveMQ. It actually uses ActiveMQ and a MySQL, so a pretty simple example that I have here. Now, this all the source code of, for this example is going to be available up on GitHub in uh, my little section of GitHub. If you go to GitHub slash Spring Framework Guru, and the repository name is Spring Boot Active MQ Example. And you can see that I have that right up there on the on the screen. So if you go to that URL, you'll be able to access the source code for this example. Now I, I do have a, a little README here, and I am backing this up with a MySQL database, a pretty simple product type application. And we are using the embedded ActiveMQ broker that Spring Boot will automatically configure for us. So I have wired up a database schema called Spring Boot underscore ActiveMQ underscore example. That schema will need to exist in your MySQL database for this example to run, or you will need to override the example. Like Spring Boot, you can override any of the MySQL properties. And what you're going to see is an application. It's a basic product application. I'll bring up a list of products. You'll be able to add in a product. And then I'm putting a link on the product to send a message. We just want this interactive, so we want to send a message for a specific product ID. And what we're going to do is send a message across ActiveMQ. We'll set up a listener for that message to, to come across. And then we'll capture that message and update that product ID record. And we'll, we'll see all this in, 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 in action. I'll, I'll show you an example of this running at the end of this. So I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ now. So I have IntelliJ up here, and this is the main Spring Boot class. And I'm going to focus on the messaging aspects of this. I do have other examples for MySQL and CRUD operations, so you're welcome to check those out. I'm just using Spring Boot and Spring uh, Data JPA to access the, the database. I'm not going to focus on that in this code review, but I'm going to, I'm going to focus on ActiveMQ and how I've configured it. So you can see there on line 18, I'm using an animation to enable JMS. That brings up the, the JMS stuff inside of Spring Boot. And on line 21, I am using a, uh, a final static string of product message queue. So this is my queue definition now. If I was running this application in production type environment and I was going someplace else, I'd probably externalize that message queue name. But here I'm adding it in as a, a static final so it doesn't change, and I didn't want to repeat myself. So there's that uh, object-oriented programming thing, don't repeat yourself. I didn't want to have that spring defined in multiple spots, so that's why I am setting it up here. We do utilize that string in a couple of configurations. So now I do set up a bean for a JMS listener container factory, and it, that takes in a connection factory, and Spring Boot by default is going to give us that connection factory for active MQ. So this is something that's going to be provided by Spring Boot. And we're just going to set up that container factory using the connection factory provided by Spring Boot. Now let's take a look at the product service implementation. And he is going to get an instance of JMS template injected. So I'm auto-wiring by constructor to bring in the JMS template. And down here on line 73 to 78, I am sending out a message using the JMS template. And you can see here, this section right here, where I'm reusing that string for the message queue name. And then I send out basically just a map message. So I'm sending out a map JMS message. And I'm, I'm going to log out there that I, I sent out a, a JMS message. So this is the service that connects into the product controller. The product controller is going to listen on a, a link, so I'm just listening for a post of that uh, product ID, or actually any post get or whatever comes across that that URL with a product ID. I'm going to send out a, a message for that. So no logic in here as far as checking, make sure I got a valid ID or anything like that. It takes whatever ID value is sent and shoots out a JMS map message for it. So the next piece that we are concerned about is the message listener. So the message listener is a Spring component, and we inject in a product repository to this guy. And through the JMS listener, we're setting up a, 
a listener on that queue. So whenever a message gets invoked on that queue, it'll get built. So you can see I'm setting up a destination. And again, here's that string for the product queue name. So again, uh, just a good habit not to repeat yourself. So that's why I'm using it there. And if I was running this in pro production, a real application, I'd probably externalize that to an external property and check that differently. But for this example, this is just fine. Now I am bringing in the JMS container factory, which we defined in the main class for the Spring Boot application as a bean. So that bean will get access. And what this is going to do is listen on that JMS queue. And you can see that we are going to convert to a long from the ID because it's a string value that's coming in from the web. I will go out to the product repository, ask for an instance of that. And then we're going to set message received to true, which it initializes to false. So we'll set it to true. And then we'll increment the message count. And then we'll go back, save it using Spring Data JPA. And then I'm logging out a, an info message saying that we, we saved that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy now. I'm not going to go through the, the rest of the stuff. I wanted to focus on the JMS here. But I am going to start him up. And I am using the ActiveMQ embedded broker. And I do have a MySQL database running locally, actually running locally in a Docker container. And we can see that he is up and running. So I'm going to toggle back over to Chrome. And I'm going to refresh this. So no products in the database. I'm going to add in a product. A simple price. And there's no validation on here. so. This is a real simple application. I'm, I'm just doing this to show you that it's saved. And now we can see that message is sent false and message count is zero. And I just want to recap how this is going to work in this. So if I come back to the controller, the product controller, when I, I hit that link to send a message, all he does is sends out the message to the queue and then redirects back to the show page. So nothing too extraordinary here, but what we're going to see is the message is going to get sent and it's going to happen asynchronously. So message gets sent and then we immediately return back control back to the controller and we display the product page. And the processing of that message is going to happen in the background. It's going to get, get on a queue, get pulled off the queue, and then processed. So what happens, and I'll show you this here in just a second, is we're going to send out a message and these values aren't going to change until we refresh. So I'm going to go ahead and send that. And now it's already come back and we can see this is false and this is zero. Now if I come back here and refresh it, we can see that those have changed to true and one. So I can send a couple more here. I'm just clicking on it randomly. And I, I did hit that multiple times send multiple messages and we can see that I only have two messages here but if I do a refresh you can see that uh, the messages are like just slightly behind so we can see how that's in incrementing and that we have that little bit of a lag there and that concludes everything that I wanted to show you as far as how to send out a JMS message um, put it on the queue we set up an automatic listener and then we're updating the database for a specific product ID. And just as a, a quick uh, reminder, if you want the source code for this, it's out on GitHub at slash Spring Framework Guru slash Spring Dash Boot Dash Active MQ example. And you can get the source code and play with this and send out some JMS messages.